What is up, all you beautiful people? We're back with another episode of The Strange Road, and man, we got a great one for you guys tonight. I'm your host, Mikey, and as always, riding shotgun, the bro host, Bub. Hello. Tonight, we have the loner stoner in master control. He was a loner. <clears throat> he was a stoner. Yep. Disbro's got a little something-something happening this evening, wishing yep. him the best, and uh, there he is, the loner there. in master control, <laughs> hanging out, being cool. Highlander. <laughs> I shouldn't say being cool. He's trying to stay cool. It gets toasty in there. Tell you what, it's before been the show... Toasty. <laughs> we always hear it in our headset. We have the fan going yeah. because we're trying to cool that room off because yeah. it's like a small nuclear it's reactor of heat going on in there. All the computers and we, everything running. We, yeah. we, we, bake, we bake Kyle at a rough you know, 200 degrees in there for about it's, an it's hour. It's more like a slow roast, <laughs> slow roast barbecue <laughs> than a bake, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, I start man. smelling barbecue sauce coming out from in there. I'm going to, like, leave my chair and go eat in an <laughs> episode sometime. Absolutely. That's too funny. Well, hey, I, let's dive right into it because I can't really hold back too much more. R- real quick. We've had a quick chat with Can our guests beforehand. Can I just say beforehand. you, like, rolled a strike <laughs> of what we've been doing here. Like, every yep. single time we come back to sit in these chairs, it's like, right. let's go. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's been awesome the last couple. Not that we haven't had great shows before, but I think having them packed so tightly because of what we're doing and just every day we get to have these conversations, it feels like it's, it's amazing. Right. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And real quick, you guys can follow us at the Strange Road on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And you can always hit us up on the Facebook group, drop some links in there, get some conversations going. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, please, you know, like, share, subscribe. Yeah, check us out on YouTube, and we're on all the podcast platforms wherever hey, you listen to your podcasts. Real quick, we had a fan yep. re- reaching out asking about Thomas Johnson speeches, and I was looking for the event at their property that we did a few years back, yeah, the Peaceful Summit. Yeah, how would we get to that? Because I couldn't find that. Is it that is a Facebook? How do we get group? to is what that actual event when we shot it when we had our guest about to be on out there as well from the Peaceful Summit? Which one? That? The one I went to you with. Oh, the Summer Solstice, yes. Serpent Mountain, yes. Star yes. Knowledge. A few years ago. Yeah. Sam and, and Rowan. 2020, and yeah. Where is that content? Because if you were wanted to get more of Tom's, it's and on, I know he had a section It's on in there. Terry's. It's on Terry's. Terry's on... Sings with Ravens YouTube. Okay. If anybody out there wants to check that out. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I believe it's, actually, you know what? I think it is called Serpent Mountain Star Knowledge YouTube channel. There you go. If not, it's Terry Sings with Ravens YouTube. Okay. Uh, we can post that in the link. Yeah, uh, in the description because I know there's a good we section can post of it on Tom Facebook. In that, yeah, right? Tom gives a I want to say a the impact crater impact crater talk yeah. on that one. Absolutely, it was really good. He had a nice big like map that I was I remember running camera that day. That's yeah. why I vividly remember what the content was. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, uh, you know, speaking of which, our guest coming up, yeah. how we met. Uh, our guest is from Tom and Terry from the Serpent Mountain Star Knowledge. Um, the I believe it was the full moon ceremony. No, it was the summer solstice. The very first live yep. stream that we helped them out with during the pandemic. Uh, our guest coming up was one of the speakers. And we connected and hit it off and stayed in contact and actually did one more event after that. Yep. Uh, without further ado, I want to introduce our guest tonight. Uh, martial arts master, speaker, world explorer, adventurer, and the everything and the legal guardian of the F.A. Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. Yes. Bill Homan, everybody. Bill, yes. how are you today, man? So good to see you. <laughs> good when you say all that explorer, adventure, and all that stuff. <laughs> hey, I like that. So, <laughs> well, it's true, man. <laughs> it you is. get around. You just told me before we went live that you've only been home a total of one month out hey. of the calendar year yeah. so far. <laughs> so. And I notice he doesn't have any moss on him yep. either. No moss, no. <laughs> so, so uh, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have you meet the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull because he's going to be a, definitely be a part of this. So uh, here's the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. Whoa! Look at that. <laughs> there it is. Wow. There you go, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mitchell Hedges, F.A. Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. Wow. It's so beautiful. I mean, the way the light hits it, um, it's unreal. 
And I will say, we yeah. did get a chance to Jeez, photograph um, and film the skull during the event that uh, Bub was just talking about. Yeah. And we have uh, the skull that actually the sunlight was coming through the trees, and it laser beamed a hole oh, in, yeah. the, um, in the cloth, the spinning cloth. Uh, that what it sits on yeah and burn a hole right in the bottom and you had told us that and we're like what really no way oh yeah and it happened so we had to move the skull a little bit yeah, more outside of the sun yeah it just takes a few well maybe 10 seconds if it's just right it'll start the fire going yeah right i mean just when you turned it there just seeing all the colors as it kind of kaleidoscopes through the skull yeah. is so neat too because like looking at it right now it's so clear through it not saying that there's imperfections but almost just the warble of the crystal itself yeah. right like in seeing it kind of bending the light yeah, as it's going through it yeah what uh, is what makes this so unique is the fact that it has lenses and prisms that are inside the crystal you know they're they're built into it which is pretty much impossible because to take a crystal and and be able to form uh, channels of light inside of it, it would take like zero gravity. Hmm. They're they're doing the place they're doing it now is on the space uh, station up in uh, up in space. They can they have experiments to build crystal and they do it like one atom at a time. So uh, there's a lot of mystery around the crystal skull, but right. uh, here. I believe to help mankind at a time when definitely we could use a little help. Right. I oh, agree. hundred percent. I mean, and it's, it, I mean, I guess we can start with a, I really want to, our audience, uh, we know you quite well, but we, our audience to get to know you a little bit, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got down this journey and eventually became the caretaker of this skull. And, and now you travel around and spread peace and positivity. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I've come to understand that, you know, I first became the caretaker back in 2007. Uh, you know, I was doing the job and it felt right, but I've been uh, definitely going into understanding past lives and going back to the history of the Crystal Skull. And I have a better idea why I'm doing this job now, which is good because it makes uh, me be able to do the job more and fully. So it's it's pretty neat. But uh, what it was is I was in the service and uh, back in the 60s, this is where everybody was, there was the largest the call up of, of men for the draft and pretty much, you know, in America's time. And it was the 66, 67, 68 area. And so I was uh, in the Air Force and I was down in uh, Panama at the time. And I used to go with friends and we'd go out to this little island called Taboga, right off the coast, about 10 or 15 miles. And they had a beautiful beach and it was the live coral reef. And, you know, that's when you have a live coral reef and you put a mask on and you go underwater, it's like you've switched and went into a different world. Mm -hmm. yeah. color, everything is just it's just amazing. So every chance I got, I would definitely try to go out there. And we there was a little uh, hotel right there on the beach, right where we'd dive. And I'd always go and... Uh, have uh, you know have a beer or a coke or something after we were done diving and there was a lady there that owned the restaurant at the hotel and she started she was very english and she started telling stories to me about mitchell hedges and and his boat coming in uh in for supplies they it park in the bay and everything and different stories about it and you know it was almost uh the adventure of it which i love you know, almost see him there at that time with his boat in the bay. So that was really wow. uh, draw. Then I, when I went to, uh, on the, there's a place called Cologne, which is right by the canal. And I was there and there was some pictures on the wall. And one of them was a picture of Mitchell Hedges. He was called to the Panama Canal because the Panama Canal was closed for two or three weeks. They couldn't get anything in it or out of it. It was <laughs> completely closed. And oh, what wow. it was, yeah, it was a huge octopus that shut down the whole Panama Canal. What? And so. How? Yeah. How? Yeah. Hold on. He had to go. There. How? Uh, what? I, size of that. Because, you know, you you got big boats going down the Panama Canal. How would that, you know, to be able to close it? So it was huge. 
So wow. something out of something out of a, one of those sci-fi movies for sure. That is, size is that on record anywhere? Uh, yes, it is. You, you can find it. You know, you have to look for it because you know when we gave up the canal, a lot of the stuff that was there uh, were, was taken away. But it was okay. You know, just a picture and a story, and that's what I what I first saw. And uh, he uh, what he did is they had to cut it up and then pull it out with the tugboats to clear the canal. Jeez. And what? I heard that. That's, <laughs> that was so wild. It's <laughs> a big octopus. That's, That's huge. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so then I was uh, out of the service, and I was taking a class in crystal, and that was like uh, 1978, 77. And one of the people there had just come back from uh, Canada where Anna Mitchell Hedges uh, was living with her secretary, uh, Cynthia, and and they gave me her number and said, yeah, call. You. She'll in, probably invite you up to see it. And so I did. And she was as friendly as can be. And they invited me up to see the skull. And that was kind of the start because at, when I saw it, it was like it touched me in a very, very deep way. And I didn't understand it. But uh, that was the start of, uh, you know, starting to work and connect with the skull. And yeah. I would come up there when they had uh, uh, different... Uh, She'd go on do a show or a lecture someplace, and I'd help her take her stuff, and I'd do that for her, and I did that for a number of years. And in 1989, her secretary passed, and uh, at that time, Sammy was in Kitchener, Ontario, and uh, she sold all her stuff and moved over to England. Now, she's got a four-bedroom house. She loaded everything up, moved to England, bought a four-bedroom house, and, and lived there for a while, and she didn't like it. She wasn't happy, so she sold the house, came back to uh, Canada, and bought another house. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and when that happened, it was again she was not really real satisfied. So I said, "Hey, come to Indiana, we'll have some adventures." And she ended up saying, "Okay." So we loaded all her stuff in a big old van and drove it to Indiana, and that was in like 1991. Hmm. And uh, wow. she stayed there for three years before she wanted she had to go, wanted to go back to England, not England, but uh, Canada. So she went back to Canada, bought another house, put all her stuff in it. And then she decided to move to England. So then she moved over there with all her stuff, bought a house. Now, she's in her nineties when she's doing this, so it's not like uh, she's fifty. And uh, then decides to come back one more time to England or from England to Canada, bought a house, and she was real sick, and nobody was there to take care of her. I said, well, come back to Indiana, and this is all about 2000. I said, well, I'll get you in good shape, and we'll have some adventures. And uh, that's one thing neat about her, because no matter how wild the adventure, if you said, let's go on an adventure, at her age, she was ready to go. I mean, wow. I have... Incredible. I, I have videos of her with a pair of nunchucks, and I'm standing there with an apple in my mouth, and she's slinging those bunch. <laughs> Jeez, <I'm... laughs> but, you know, so when you talk about things, it's, you got to be careful because you don't want to be in the end of the, <laughs> right. the apple in your mouth. <laughs> oh my, that's great. Yeah. We're going to take well, a time out for yeah. a second. But hey, Bill, we're going to sure. take a quick time out. Uh, we, I'm not well, sure if it's one of our phones or one of your phones in the room. There's a uh, if if the, we're going to try to track down what's beeping in the okay, background. Right here. Okay. Right here. I'll. I'll yep. Yeah, sorry about that. Yep. You get um, that many messages that often? Because I'll tell you what, man, you're a popular guy. <laughs> you said it was I'll me. Tell you my life. I it was. I knew it wasn't me, so I said it's either Mikey or it's Bill. But I didn't know who it was. But I was trying to do like oh, Morse code good. blinking to well, Kyle. That was a good uh, exit point. Yeah. After Bill laughed, so it's fine. We, no, we kind of just totally fine. Chop this out, or we can just yeah. just roll with it. I'm still blown away by that octopus. Oh, yeah. So, Bill, you were uh, you're taking care of um, Anna, correct? Okay. Yeah, so in uh, 2000, she decided to uh, move back to Indiana. So we went up there, got all her stuff, and moved it back to Indiana. And uh, and she moved in, and we were there. Oh, it wasn't more than like six months. And uh, I don't know if you heard of Carol Wilson, 
Davis. She's the one that wrote The Skull Speaks, and she was a really good friend of Sammy's. The Skull Speaks, if you haven't heard about it, it's uh, one of the best written spiritual books uh, ever. It's really, it's just a short little book. And it was her downloading, working with the skull over a number of years, and they put it in a little book. But And the book was 10 prophecies that were at the end of the book. And by uh, 2010, all 10 of them had come to true, all 10 of them. So it's a, it's if you ever get a chance to see The Skull Speaks by with Carol Davis, it is really, it's powerful. Yeah. We're checking so, but, it out. Yeah. yeah so being a, her, his good, close friend of Sammy, uh, she called up and said, hey, Carol, look, pack your stuff, dearie. That's how she would talk. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to Honduras, <laughs> and and so she. I came home from work, and she says, "Oh, we're we're going to Honduras, in in, in three weeks." And I, and I I had to fall into the, the line, but it sounded really good, and we ended up going to uh, start it. Uh, you know, you fly into Honduras. We got an old car, and we drove up the mountain around the you know these drop off cliffs and stuff to get to a place called Copan. She wanted to go to Copan. Oh yeah. Very familiar. And what yeah she has a had uh her father worked with a number of the of the uh, archaeologists there and they would give him a lot of information on uh, his exploration of Luban tomb. So mm. there was still that ship and also there was a connection to uh you know, some of the artifacts there, because she was really on a trip to see if some of the stuff that they left there was still in the same place as when they left it. That's what she was checking, because uh, she was supposed to come back after uh, uh, 1939 or 13, 1938, but when the war broke out, they wouldn't leave her father leave the country. Mm-hmm. So he had to he had to stay there. And after the war, they never went back down there. So there was a number of things that was left there that it was up to Sammy to kind of keep an eye on. So we were, me and the, and the psychic and Sammy went down to Copan. And it was it was quite an interesting thing. We met. It was, it was some magical stuff. And then we ended up flying down to Rotan. And that's where uh, uh, Morgan the Pirate had his fortification a place called uh, Port Royal, right out by the island, this small island. And she wanted to see because of some of the stuff that she was checking on. So here we are down there with Carol the Psychic. And uh, we uh, got a taxi guy. It was You know, Sammy talks everybody into anything. <laughs> you know, I'm there. It's Carol's there. But uh, so we're there, and uh, uh, we drove over to the Port Royal area, and it was all... Uh, just bush and stuff. And we finally found a place where it was right near the uh, the water, but we had to drive down the side of a pretty steep cliff with hard, hardly a road, just a, a walking path. We went down to the by the water, and now there was nothing there. And we saw some guy in a boat. So we waved him down. He came over, told him the story, and he took us out to uh, port uh, to uh, where. Morgan had his fortification on the island, and someone had bought it then, but we be, were friends with him and got to show us all around and see the places, and she goes, let's check that out. But uh, what she really wanted to see, she had a little island called Key Comfort that was right down there. And so we had the guy that, that uh, took us there to take us over to her little island to check it out. So wow. that was that was pretty amazing. But uh, so then we... We go uh, and we start to head back and we couldn't get up the hill. So here's Bill outside pushing on his little car trying to get up the hill. <laughs> the taxi driver, man, he's hitting it hard. But we finally got <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was his car. By well, the time he got done, it was it looked like it went through the war. But yeah, he, was a, he was a trooper. And then we started leaving there and there was a lady getting some mail along the side of the road. And for some reason... I had just said, hey, stop. And I stopped and we started talking to her. And we found out that her husband was uh, one of the crew members on the Amigo boat, that Mitchell Hedges boat that he sailed all, all through Central and South America on. Wow. And so, 
and it was just met him. And then uh, we were able to go in the house and he was still alive. But, you know, they were they're both, you know, in their 90s at that time. But the thing was, all his married life, uh, he would always tell his wife about Sammy and how beautiful she is and how perfect and she does this and does that. And now Sammy's even a little older than his wife. And we come out there and he, and uh, we got to sit there and he, well, I got, I got video of uh, a lot of the stories they told. It was pretty neat. But the thing is uh, after we left, he, he wasn't able to pull that on his wife anymore. She stood up to him after all those years. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I can relate, but I can relate, Bill. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, just a quick little story. You don't mind me telling these stories? Oh, no, I love no, this. No. This is amazing. That's what we're here for. It's you, you got okay. the floor. Yeah, it's all you. <laughs> Over there, she wanted to see this island called uh, Wanaka, and it's a place where Mitchell Hedges found. Some- <laughs> earliest pottery they found pottery that was pre-mayan there and we have letters from the the, uh, uh, indian museum in new york from the curator thanking mitchell hedges for this discovery so it was that's where she wanted to go and what it was there was a cave on the property on this island that uh, supposedly if you went in the cave it would be like a stairs going down to a big room and the big room was where all the different tribes would come together and they'd have their, their meetings uh, once or twice a year in this cave underneath wow. the island. And so there's also uh, talk that there was caves that went from there underground all the way to the mainland, which is like probably 30 miles, and then all oh. through Central. So we were we were looking for that, and we were on this little island, and there were only two cars on the island. So there's no big fancy roads, just mostly walking trails and where they have uh, horse t- trails that go across the island. And so the way you usually get around is they have boats and they'll take you to the other side or whatever. But uh, she wanted to look for that uh, that spot where they found the, uh, the, uh, the, cr- the different artifacts. So we found out about the two cars on the island. One was this old beat up truck and we were able to rent it. The other one was owned by the drug lord of the island. And he was fancy. Oh my. <laughs> hey, from him. <laughs> so I had uh, Sammy sitting in the front with the guy who was driving. Carol and me were in the back of this beat up old car going through some roads like you wouldn't believe. And we're going down there and you know, Carol was uh, unbelievable at what she picks up stuff. So she said, Stop. And so we stopped the car. And she said, right over there. And I saw her and I took off running. And uh, they're just sitting there. What happened? And I got over there and went around with the guy and we found these caves there. And but, uh, you know, you needed lights and all kind of stuff and ropes to go yep. in them. Yep. But, uh, it was interesting what we found. And then uh, that that's that's how we ended up there. But there was also on one of the islands there that they found a crystal boy and it was like 18 inches tall it's either a boy or it could be a, a guard of some type or whatever but this crystal boy was left there by mitchell hedges in uh in 1932 because they say it was enchanted oh, and they uh so they had to leave it and they were going in after the war it was his plan to go back there and then he ended up in uh, South uh, South Africa, and he never made it back. So that's mm. why Sammy would go and look for these these different signs where it is. Mm. The way the way they did things down there, they had this. The camera was one of those cameras on glass slides where you put your head underneath it, you hold up the flash powder, and that's how you know that's how they had the camera. That's all they had. And so uh, when they wanted to document something. Mm. Instead of taking a map and put X on the spot, five spots here, three here, what they would do is they take a picture that just looked like a regular picture, but where they knew where it was, you know? Right. And so, oh, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, that, so a lot of those things, you know, I found out a, a few of the things what they were, but there was a lot of them that, uh, but uh, on two other occasions since then, since I, 
became the keeper. Uh, they uh, there was uh, film crews that took me down there and were looking for the the crystal boy. Now I didn't really tell them exactly where it was because if they did find it, what would they do with it? You know, it just mm-hmm. become a these piece on their mantle or something. So yep. I still have, I still have to go back down there because I have all the pictures and anybody. Hey, would you want to go on a trip? Would you want to go on a little adventure? <laughs> yes. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, absolutely. In. I was about to say I've been to Belize, Panama, Costa Rica. I know of the roads you speak of in some of those countries. I've been so through the Yucatan. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, in there. we like to adventure for sure. For sure. All right. Yeah, Bill. So, I'm up for yep. anywhere you want to take us. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. So just spin. <laughs> just spin the globe like that, and then point, and then we'll go. My uh, my fascination with. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bill. Oh, we got another. We got one coming up pretty soon. It looks like, and we need a good photographer. Okay, what you got the, coming the up? Video, uh, we're gonna go to Ecuador. Okay, that sounds like fun. We're gonna go up to Amazon to this place where we get out, and then you have to hike two hours through the jungle to this little village. When you get to the little village, then you have to you're gonna spend the night there. And the next day, you get up early and you hike. An uh, hour through the village, through the jungle, and you get to this cave. Now, this is the cave that Armstrong went there in 1925 because of the legend of the the crystal or the golden tablets that mm. are supposedly. And uh, it's uh, supposed to be an area where there's a connection between ancient technology and also uh, ET technology in this in these caves. Okay, but they just cave because they they get you and they lower you in 220 feet into the cave and then they're in there then you have to go and then there's another thing where you're going down like 900 feet further into into this great big coliseum under the ground whoa so wow and someone yeah did someone recently find this or has this been a known archaeological site this is this you know you have to look up it it's called Las Talos, okay. K-Y-O-N. Yeah, so it's uh, it's it could be a real adventure, and you know, uh, I work with you know, it's like when I was doing the show with uh, with uh, Gates, and he were going around, and yeah, how he does it is yeah, let's dig here, uh, nothing there, dig over here, nothing there. But I believe in going with the psychics with Carol and stuff like that, where mm-hmm. she would say, "Corpse face this way." 20 paces this way, dig yeah. right there. And that makes it, you know, if you're going to do it, unless you have LADAR where you can look under the ground, mm-hmm, you right. need some to uh, really pinpoint what's there, you know. So it's uh, it's kind of interesting for sure. And, and you said Gates. Are you saying Josh Gates? Yeah. Did you do his show recently? Yeah, I have a, I have a Josh Gates. Yeah, it's called, it's uh, about the Crystal Skull. Ex- yeah, mm-hmm. and it's, Expedition we Unknown, first- I believe it's called, or... Yeah, we what we did is we were looking for that crystal boy. We first went to Lubantun where the skull was found, and then we got on a fast boat uh, to uh, Honduras. Not no Ecuador, Ecuador. No, you. Uh, what's the name? What's the name of that city? Right or the country right by Honduras, uh, Guatemala. Went to Guatemala, picked up an old beat up jeep, and drove up north to run into Honduras and Copan. Mm. So, but uh, going across the bay, there's a lot of pirates in there. So you have to keep an eye open and have a fast boat to get across. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> that's wow. extreme. Okay. And, you know, so we went there and we met with, because uh, that's where Mitchell Hedges worked with the uh, with a people that, uh, archaeologists there. And another thing is when I was there with Carol, and Sammy, Anna Mitchell Hedges, uh, what happened is they had just opened up the the tomb of the Red Lady there. The famous it's a famous uh, archaeological site now, but at that time no one was allowed in it, and they didn't have it completely explored. But with when I had Carol there, she went and told them exactly what was in it hmm. and how it was, and then she also told them what they were missing. Is that pretty crazy? Wow. And, yeah. 
So that was that was pretty interesting too. And they went and found it. They went and and now they have all this information because Carol gave them direction on where to find it. They did find a lot more after that. Yeah. So oh. yeah. That's so she, cool. yeah done some really amazing things. Yeah. I'd love to talk to her. How did you maybe uh, really, maybe you said it? How did you meet Carol? Carol, okay. What happened is you know I I met Sammy. And right around uh, 1979, 1980, right in that area, Carol had been, uh, you know, she, what she was is she's worked in the medical field. And then she had all these people say, oh, you should go see the crystal skull. And she thought, skull, I don't want to see that. What is that? And But they finally got her over there. And when she saw it, she didn't realize it, but she went into a trance. Oh, wow. And she, for the next hour, she was they recorded all the things she was saying, un- unbelievable stuff, you know, that was whatever was asked. And so that, after that, she started going there and, and uh, downloading it. And she worked with a, a writer. So it was uh, the writer, uh, Carol and Sammy, where they worked together and they made the Skull Speaks book. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Have, yeah. Have, have you had anyone else have any effect like that similar? To hers? Uh, yeah, well, you know what? Uh, she, she just, uh, when she was with it the first time, she didn't even realize it. She thought what happened is she was sitting there and people were saying, oh, do you see that? You see that? And Carol's like, oh, come on. And she said, I'll, I'll act like I'm sleeping and maybe they'll think I'm doing something uh, real real, up, real cool and neat. So they <laughs> let her alone. And all of a sudden, she hears the noise and she opens her eyes and she realized she was sleeping. And they said, oh, that was amazing. That was so amazing. And she doesn't know what they're saying until they took a tape recorded and she they played it. And it was not her voice that was talking. So oh that really. Oh, my gosh. I just got chills, man. I just literally wild, got chills. Like that, that's a great yeah. story. My goodness. Bill, I do have a question. Well, not, not so much a question, but kind of lay a little bit of foundation. Of maybe some people don't know the history of the Mitchell Hedges skull and how it was discovered and, and the, the people that were involved with that and sort of uh, give us a little bit of a background or timeline uh, on the skull itself. Sure. Uh, the skull was uh, found in 1924. So uh, in January 1st, of uh, 2024, we're going to have a hundred year uh, party for Sammy and the skull. So wow. I think that's hundred years, but uh, it was, uh, they were, Miss Mitchell Hedges worked for the British secret service and he was down in that area doing different work, possibly because the uh, Nazis were down there looking for artifacts of spiritual value. Uh, he was down with an American, uh, Secret Service guy by the name of Ambrose Brose, and they were down together. And there's kind of a lot of the stuff where you're dealing with that. There's a lot of things that people don't say this, they don't say that, and so there's a lot of missing pieces. But in the business they're in, there is a lot of missing pieces. Hmm. But uh, so he heard about a city that was bar- buried in uh, in uh, uh, well, it wasn't uh, Belize; it was British Honduras at the time. And so uh, they uh, went to, he wanted to go see if that city was the white city, which he was really looking for, because he heard that was really connected to uh, the uh, connection between Atlantis and the Maya. So he went down there and, uh, and found uh, uh, a city in, buried in the jungle. And it had, when they finally opened it up, there were seven pyramids a ball court, a spiritual center, a lot of different other uh, buildings right in that complex. So in the tallest one of the buildings, it was told that if you went to the top of it, you could see all the way to the ocean. Hmm. Now, the story I'm telling you is Anna's story. F.A. Mitchell Hedges did not say where it came from, and he never would reveal it. Anna came out with this story. And because they were there and worked with the Maya, I'm going to, you know, I tell her story. Yeah. My story is he was 35 miles in his boat off the coast of Honduras. And there was a bright light in the sky. And he looked up and this beam of light came down on the boat and 
deposited the skull right there. That's my story. <laughs> wow. I'll tell, I'll tell you the, I was telling you the way that Anna told it to me. And that is, uh, so she was there and the, the kids were told never to go on the, on the top of the pyramids because there was dangerous. The rocks move, snakes. Yeah. But she heard that if you went to the top of the tallest one, you could see all the way to the ocean. And she wanted to do that. And when everyone was taking a siesta, they, in the middle of the day, they, when it was so hot, they would take that siesta break. And the young kids, well, they were up and going. They snuck to the top of it. They wanted to see the sea. And as they were looking for it, the clouds moved and a light came through the cloud and a beam of life went down to the where the pyramid where they were standing and the rocks had moved and stuff. And it went through and there was a light inside. And she got all excited. Oh, there's somebody inside. She didn't know, but she ran down and told her dad, which was kind of a mistake at the time because she was in big trouble mm -hmm. for being. But then the next day when he when she woke up, they had all the men out and they were slow. They were opening up the, the pyramid, moving the rocks. And as they did, it started to collapse. And so they had to back off and then do only one rock at a time. And they did that till they had a small hole big enough for a small person. And Anna was chosen, so they tied a rope around her, gave her a, a light on her head somehow, and they took it and lowered her into this pyramid. And as she felt around and looked around, she found something. She stuck it in her shirt and told on the rope. And when they brought her up and came into this and opened up their, her shirt, all the natives started crying and kissing the ground as their God had returned. And it was so impactful that Mitchell Hedges presented it to the high priest and the high priest took it and they put it in an altar and they burned fires around it 24 hours a day and people would come from the jungle from all over just to see it and it was there until they had to leave in 1927 in 1927 the high priest presented back to Mitchell Hedges because when he was there he always brought two doctors with him he brought food he brought medicine and uh, he paid them an honest wage that they would uh, they really appreciated him and what he did for them. It wasn't like he was there. A lot of the people just took, but mm -hmm. Mitchell Hedges all. <clears throat> and so that was their, the reason they had great respect and love for him. And uh, so that's the, that's the story of Anna and the crystal skull. I wow. like my story. Your story is pretty <laughs> interesting, Bill. That's very creative. <laughs> I, yeah, I like it. I like it. <clears throat> so, wow, what an amazing, I mean, so Bill, can you go back to this temple complex that they were at in Belize or I guess off the coast of Honduras or um, can can you get back to the exact pyramid now to where it was uh, retrieved from? I, you know, they, uh, they moved a lot of the stones. They pretty well took most of it down and it's in a position where you know it's on this kind of a side of the hill where i i know where it's at because i was told mm -hmm. by the uh us have a friends that down there that's the, the shaman and he was the one that passed on to the information where it was and also sammy we took her down there in 96 to uh see the uh lubantun one more time that was at a different time but she she went through it and made the contacts down there because she lived down there as she was growing up. So she lived with a family, Mayan family, when her dad would, uh, the rainy season, would leave and go and try to raise money for the expedition to continue. And so uh, she would just had a, with the family of the Mayas was like her family and had great love for them, for sure. Wow, fascinating. Wow. So, <clears throat> I mean, so it's not some complex that's on some kind of a travel guide or it's not on the map anywhere, no. but you know where <laughs> you guys know where it's at, but it's not like a parking lot you can pull up into with a gift, gift shop. <laughs> well, the only gift shop is the Mayans selling their handmade wares. They yeah. have something, like that. but yeah, it, uh, it's in, it's in Belize now. That's where the country's now Belize. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful country. And, you know, I, she had great love for it. And I do too. I, uh, you know, I've worked with some of the, the different indigenous there and 
being with the skull, working with various indigenous groups, which I have over the years, I have great respect because I feel they are in a position of importance now because they have the knowledge and the connection to the land that if we take the time to listen to their truths, we can find how to keep the land and be in balance with the land. Yep. And instead of raping the land and taking everything, we can give and take as we should, along with the animals, all of the balance between all of it. And that's what they have to give to mankind at this time, because we're talking about, oh, it's the whole, everything is being, you know, uh, direct because we're this and we do that. But we're doing it because the, the people are just in with them uh, in charge of certain areas are just taking everything they can take out of the land. They take the coal, they take the gold, they take everything and they don't give it back. So yep. it's time now that we listen to their ways because you know a lot of it has been lost but underground they have the knowledge and there's i know you met uh, uh chief golden light eagle before when you were when we were there and, mm -hmm. and he was an amazing person that i have great great respect for him and his knowledge i it was almost like when i sat with him it was like i just just didn't say anything because i just felt his his presence was so amazing but yeah, so there's that's what's happening. Yeah, I uh, when I was working, I, I was adopted into a Hopi family. Uh, the the daughter of Grandfather Martin, who was the last of the line prophets for the Hopi Nation, it was his daughter, and her husband is the medicine man uh, for the nation. But they they adopted me and they gave me the name Soki, and nice. I thought that was yeah. So I, Soki means uh, badger claw. So that's what they gave me. But yeah, uh, fits. When Sammy went, <laughs> yeah, Sammy went and worked with uh, in uh, South Africa after the war, and she became friends with the Zulu and the king of the Zulu, and the Zulu people gave her a name, and it was Glean Glover. She's Glean Glover, and oh, that sounds good. And then she found out it means big elephant, and at first she was. <laughs> <really> <laughs> But when she really realized the respect they had for her, they called her Big Elephant. That was pretty good. Now, I worked with the Blackfeet at a council meeting, and they gave me, it was Blackfeet and the Blackfoot uh, elders together, and they gave me the name Natusi Nina. And uh, that sounds kind of different, but I, what it means is something that I think is really cool. It means uh, star man. Very hey, cool. I'm so I love that. I love <laughs> yes. that. That also yeah, fits, are. also appropriate. Yes. <laughs> Just based off some of the conversations we've had in private, Bill, uh, with your experiences in the skull and and what uh, kind of things that you guys are, are channeling through that. Um, and, and I don't know if you can tell us a little bit about some of these crystal skull meditations that you hold, kind of let people know a little bit about that and some of the things that you've because you, you take the skull all over the place. Mm -hmm. Serpent Mound last spring, you were there doing a, a meditation and uh, had had said that there were some interesting things that happened there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, we when we had the skull out by the, the mounds and as the sun was coming up on the, uh, the equinox, there was a, a little, and you can see it because it comes down right in front of you. And, when it, before it was up, it looks like a little fairy, and it was flying around, and it got up, and it went by the skull, and then it came back, and you could see it with your naked eye. It wasn't just the camera. And uh, then uh, uh, Kath, she uh, likes fairies and everything, so she was, there's a thing with, uh, if you if you love, let's see, if you like a fairy, clap your hands or something like that. Yeah. And she started doing that, and this fairy started getting bigger and bigger. I'm going to send you a picture of it, of it taken by, you know, I can't give you the, the, the film of it, the video right yet. Sure, sure. Because I don't know what to do with it because it's pretty amazing. Yeah. But uh, I'll show you the picture. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So uh, for that, that was interesting. <laughs> but uh, it's what it is. I, you know, I when I first got the skull, you know, I still had a lot to learning to do. 
And uh, right after I received the skull, not too far after that, I was invited to go to Australia. And so um, that sounded really neat. So I went to Australia. And uh, when I got there, the Aborigines were saying that they foretold that I'd be there four years ago. And so when I got there, they were waiting for me and waiting for the skull. And I got to, finally got to connect with them. And what they wanted me to do is take the skull to this one area where there was an uh, ancient caldera. Ancient caldera is a uh, old volcano. Mm -hmm. And sunline, they call them sunlines, you know, but they call them there. They, the Aborigines say sunlines, but it went from there all the way through the sea, all the way to Machu Picchu. Wow. And the sunline had been uh, broken for hundreds and hundreds of years. So uh, I had the ceremony on uh, too. I say a lot of those times I'm blessed to be able to put them in film and, and video, but we put the skull in the, where they told me to do it and they did a ceremony and I worked with them. And about, oh, about 20 minutes later, they said, thank you. And okay, I picked up the skull put it in the into its place and and uh, left but uh, they said it they opened it up and so but that was a big thing for me because I'm using what mainly the skull works with uh, land areas where it helps to balance out the energy on the planet which is quite exciting and so that's why I've gone a lot of places and uh, just let the energy uh, balance out and it's kind of kind of necessary because we've kind of done a lot of damage to the our our beautiful blue planet and if we can heal it in any way that's that's a really neat thing so uh but i also use the skull that works really good on one and one if we're working with somebody and i've found lately that it works real just as well almost and with using it on Zoom where people are in front of it because I think you are there, but I think you've been feeling the energy because it, it definitely uh, spreads out pretty good. I just look at it and, and get vibes, to be honest. Yeah, the <laughs> eyes are really notice. – I'm really noticing the eyes for some reason right now because they look really lit well, up. As the sun even behind it's all Bill crystal. Uh, is moving. Yeah. The skull is changing. Well, it's not that. It's the image it's actually taking from behind him. It's yeah. not picking him up. It's picking up the dress or something. That is weird. Because you can see a little blue in the right it's eye refracting. or the left eye of it in the picture, mm -hmm. but you can't see it in the right eye because it's only grabbing. So like you said earlier, how it was engineered crystal and it has lenses internally built into it. That's what I'm saying. Like, So those eyes literally Perfect. look like they're seeing something and popping it out. That's so wild. I've never seen yeah. that. Yeah, when you look at it with it, it's like it takes you into a world of crystal. So it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. So, but it, yeah, it does, and it works really good with meditation. That's why we do these meditation groups because it helps focus people's minds, and and we do, you know, sending out love and light to the planet and the world. That's kind of what we do. And I think the world could use a little love. Uh, what I've kind of come to the understanding. There's that energy in it. It's very peaceful, but it's it's like uh, you know I say, oh, it's universal love, but it's it's more than that. It's it's helping people to remember remember who and what they are, not as a their physical self, but as their soul self, their DNA at the through their all their levels, and so it's going back to a time before the more or less the fall where you have that universal love coming right from the creator through, and you can feel it come through. And that's by feeling that it helps people to remember that. And it's really, it changes people because it opens them up to higher potentials in themselves. So I, I really enjoy doing that. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree. I mean, the, the we came in contact with it in 2020 and, and we've been able to do, We've been on a trajectory, and, and I really do think, I mean, Tom and Terry really 
helped us get off the ground in a lot of ways with that event mm -hmm. uh, because all of our opportunities and, and jobs went away and we were developing this live streaming uh, system and I pitched Terry to do a virtual fully virtual event and she looked like who the hell is this guy and everybody <laughs> was super skeptical who are these guys from Columbus yep and I kind of just explained her like hey your events let's I know you lost your event but let's let's bring it virtually and, and see if we can get some speakers together and and she took a chance on us and really helped us and you were a part of that event and Roa and myself got to sit with the skull after we were done on I think the second last day and got to sit with the skull and it it, it really is to be up close and personal and and to have time by yourself with it um, you know it's not tangible but it really did that event and and being yeah, with the skull not just kind of sent us on a on a tear. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah. But yeah, it brings out those gifts that you have in inside of you. So you know, so many people. Oh, what what's my purpose here? Why I haven't? I don't have a purpose. But the purpose is you know finding that gift inside of you that is God given gift. You know, where you're able to work with people and bring this out and, and bring all these different people there and, and share their knowledge with the world by putting it out like that. And it's, it's a gift because it's a way of you giving to the world and the blessings of helping them come back to you, you know? So I, that's where I find it so neat. No, I you know I have, I'm working with the crystal skull, you know, that's, but you know what, each one of us have so much that we have to give, and that's finding that key that what it is and then becoming that full self where you can help other people and in doing that with your gift and bringing that back to you. It's so exciting because I believe you know, we're more than our physical body and we and we have, uh, you know, when you, you live here, you can have all the money in the world until the day you're not here anymore. And that's not there. And we're with such a short period of time when you're thinking about forever, you know? So yeah. uh, it's all, all about learning. So it's pretty pretty neat and pretty exciting. Yeah. It's funny you just said that when you think about forever because I've actually, I have a thought process I use on that that I still don't like either answer. I can't understand finite <laughs> existence. Like if my life ended tomorrow and that's just it, there's nothing more. I can't understand that. But on the other context, I can't understand infinity. Do you know what I mean? I'm left grasping for straws, whether it stops or goes forever. I'm like, neither really makes sense to me. You know, it's such a hard concept. Oh, there's, no there's no such thing as time. Hmm. And all things are ends. So, it, you know, we what we do is we live in this small band of frequency. And everything, oh, it's a table and this is this and that. But, you know, it's, it, we're, we're in this frequency it is. But if we were in a different frequency what's there, you know? Right. And uh, that's kind of a really interesting concept because uh, it's a way that we are able to connect with these different frequencies. That's, you know, you want to talk about ETs and stuff and different forces, but, you know, they're, most of them, uh, like uh, your, uh, uh, oh, heck with those, uh, uh, those big hairy guys that appear and disappear, the Sasquatch. Sasquatch, Sasquatch. Yeah. 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 What they do is they're able to shift frequency. That's why they disappear and you can't find them. But, uh, you know, that's, if you work on your meditation, you can open up to these different channels and frequencies. It's just, uh, it's just there for every one of us. We have the gift and the ability to just take the time to do it sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. Is there so, any kind of particular meditation? I was going to ask. <laughs> I was about to say, like, which uh, one can you, I sign up for? How do you hold the meditations? Are you guys chanting? Are okay. you singing? Or because uh, I know well, I've you know seen what? a couple different ones. Yeah. We have the you guys have the crystal bowls, is what what we saw in the spring equinox. Yeah, well, that's what that's uh, crystal bowls. The, sc the the skull is about sound or frequency, light, and sound, and that's what it it all. Uh, acts to recently I just came back from Lilydale, which is the oldest spiritual center in the country, 1872. And the monks were there when I was there from Tibet. 
and we were up on stage and they were playing their their instruments and there is a frequency in that that helps to unlock the consciousness in the in the skull and brings that out so it's really neat it it really uh, like the like the bowls with that it's uh it, it's quite uh ex- you know exciting to be there and feel that energy so yeah wow yeah, it was incredible in the spring equinox. I think there were, I don't know how many crystal bowls were going yeah. at the same time with different frequencies, that, and it just uh, felt the resonation. Uh, you, it was palpable. I, yeah, those those bowls are impressive. Yeah, I'm going to send you the video on the, right on the, at Huntington Beach. We were there with the skull and the bowls, and this young girl, and she was over the top awesome at it, the bowls, and she would play it. And, uh, that when then with that they would uh, uh, the skull lit up these beautiful colors and the only time it would light you know where you could see it uh, that is that it's dark really dark how dark it was was when they took a flash of it and the flash would light up the area then it'd go back and so it's really I'll, I'll I'll show it to you and you see what you think of it it's pretty cool cool yeah I think I remember seeing a photo or something from that session that you showed me. And it was okay, pretty I- wild. I mean, the yeah. color, it's noticeably strange inside. There's something yeah. happening inside the, the skull. Have you ever had it studied? Yeah, you know? Has anybody ever studied it? I don't know even how you would study it, but, you know. What it is, it would take the right technology to study it. And I think they're starting to come with that technology soon because it has to do with the light that they store the information on light sequences inside the skull Mm -hmm. because uh, what, what I think about the, why, why would they, the ancients use a skull and have that for, for putting all this knowledge in. So, you know, a lot of people now, because of what they believe in connotation about skulls, everybody's kind of nervous or scared of it until you see it and you see all the beauty and workmanship that went into it. And you say, wow, Somebody put a lot of love in this, oh, yeah. but uh, yeah. But the thing is, is it's in the shape because they wanted to put it in something that was either love very much or fear. It would so it would be protected throughout the ages. If it was something like a you know, it, was, it looks like an egg or something. You know, it probably wouldn't be since they make it in the shape of a skull. This is piezoelectric quartz, and they say they can hold. You know how you know untold amount of, of knowledge inside the skull, and that's what the that would pass down the information. And we've gotten a lot of it from doing uh, uh, having the uh, readers work with it and download. So that uh, there is that possibility of someday soon being able to bring that out for the good of mankind. Right, because some people, including yourself, and what I've read is that it's a storage, almost like a giant hard drive, if you will, for data and information. And that's why, you know, quartz and silica, all these things are used in computer chips and and modern technology. Ultrasounds. Yeah, and this is just maybe technology that we don't fully understand or have the, the technology to, how do you plug it in and get that data? Well, Bill and these folks are doing it through meditation and, um, you know, through kind of ethereal ways. But Mm. wouldn't it be fascinating if you could hook that thing up to a computer and read the data that's on it, if it is a hard drive of some sort? Yeah. Well, well, put in by a technology, and so it can also come out with a technology, you know? Yeah. So that's just a matter of... Of having the right technology. So, you know, people, oh, they want to use a heat thing and measure the heat and stuff like that, which is kind of interesting because it does, when you work with it, the temperature raises tremendously up. It kind of warms up the whole room. Yeah. When when the, uh, when the movie Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull came out in 2007, they, they, or 2008, they sent me to Cannes, France for the opening. What? And they had, yeah, and they put me in a, a super yacht. It was four three hundred eighty four foot yacht, what? and in the bay right there. And uh, wow, and we had all these uh, different uh, 
uh, there was, you know, some actors and stuff, but mainly a, uh, a lot of business people and a lot of shakes. And you know what a shake is, yep, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I never knew what a shake was, but there, I met a lot of really nice ones I'll bet. on the boats. I'll and bet. it was really neat. <laughs> I had the skull and was able to show it and uh, the various people. And when I was there, you know, the, the I had there was two boats that were close to me, one over on this side, one on that side. The one on this side boat was uh, was Brad Pitts, hmm. and the one on the other <laughs> side had four, oh, four. The one on the other had four masts, and that was uh, Steven Seagal, uh, C- Steven uh, Spielberg's boat. What? And, uh, what? He only stayed a, a day or so, and he pulled anchor and he sailed away. But yeah, he was there, so I can still say that at one time my two neighbors were Brad Pitt. And uh, Stephen Steve Spiel, oh, Spielberg. That is incredible. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a sense of humor with this business, you know. <laughs> you gotta, I have a question because you brought up just just this notion. The movie. Dan Aykroyd. Have you ever met Dan Aykroyd? Uh, you know, I've never met him, and you know, I've opened opportunities to. Really? Uh, yeah. He. Yeah, but I think you know what? Because uh, he's he came out with his his liquor, right? Right. Uh, right. Well, what happened is, you know, Carol Wilson, she's she thinks she is the owner of the skull. And when he she found out about it, she wrote him a letter and made him take Mitchell Hedges off of it. Now, if he was talking to me, I would say that's I I, I take it as a I don't take it as a something bad. I, I would be very happy that he did it. And I thought yeah. that'd be really cool. Yeah. But uh, and she did not like it. And she had no right to, to write him and do that. But she did. So mm. because of that, he's I'm I haven't really got a good connection with them, but he talks about the skull a lot, and yes. I'd like to. Well, I'd, I'd be very meet him for sure. I tell you what, I, I I like to think I'm a little bit of a Twitter wizard right now on social media, and I have tried to hit him up many times to say, hey, when we went to the first uh, meeting with you at Tom and uh, Tom and Terry's for the uh, event. I was like, hey, we're at the Crystal Skull. I thought for sure just be like, wow, you know, neat, whatever. Didn't get anything. So it's like yeah. I didn't know all that. So maybe that explains why. why. He's like, yeah. hey, I don't want to touch it. But, you know, we could maybe shine a light on that and be like, Dan, they, you know. Uh, time time yeah, heals all. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to, yeah. I think it would be good to uh, finally explain that to him and so he'd at least have an idea of what was going on. That would be amazing. I have that do things. Because they think they can, and really they have no right, so that happens. So. Wow! But wow! That, I mean, Wild. I'm just so I'm just so glad and you, you know got what? to go to the film festival with it for the but, movie made about it. But I wish that they wouldn't have went that direction. And the obviously in the it film? went way Hollywood. It's and Indiana Jones, the big alien. It's Indiana it's Crystal Jones. Skull. Yeah, but they could have used just the story of the actual Crystal Skull, and it would have been. You know, way well, more problem. interesting. But that's not what they yeah, did with the Raiders little... of the Lost Ark either. Yeah. They opened the I mean, would have, But the you know, crystal the... skulls were alien they... skulls in the movie. You need to rewatch. That. I did watch it. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't, they didn't take all, the exact all... one. What's yeah, that? We're all aliens. What do you... <laughs> I like that take. I like that yeah, take. It I doesn't matter what the skull movie. it is. If it's crystal, it's still using the same storyline. And maybe that's an alien skull, right? Maybe maybe that's what he's saying. You're not, we're the you aliens. understand what I'm saying. It's fine. The shape of the skulls in the movie were literally elongated I know skulls. That. I know that. that. They didn't have to go in that direction. They could have just had the story based. That thing's so amazing. But it's Indiana Jones. They didn't Jones. have to go so... Maybe they didn't want to use Far, the mental but... hedges story in it. Maybe, I mean, maybe that got too strange. I've got, to, I've got a good together. story about that. If, right? Yeah. Uh, so the reason, one of the reasons they didn't do it because they have a team of some of the best uh, lawyers in yeah. the business. Yeah. And uh, even after they used the skull and made it look like it did, uh, they were there was a, a police government sued me, Spielberg, and Lucas. Whoa. And yeah, that's because why. of okay, that that's makes sense. Story, and because of the fact that they have good lawyers and they had it shaped like more alien, yep. they were able to cut it down in no time. And so that was so they know wow. more. How crazy is also, that? Though, 
<laughs> the story about Mitch, uh, Indiana Jones is this. Carol, the, the psychic, lives in Toronto. And this guy was up there doing a show and he, in 1978 or 9, and he called uh, Carol and wanted to know all about F.A. Mitchell Hedges, all about the Crystal Skull, all about Anne. And she went and told the story about them and what they did and where they found it and all the things. And then he wanted to talk to Anna. So they called over to her house. She lived about an hour from, from Carol. And uh, Anna was uh, uh, just leaving the next day for London. So she couldn't really see him or talk to him because she's right in the middle of leaving. But uh, the gentleman took all the information and thanked them and she thanked them. And that was uh, three or four years later, there was a movie that came out. It was called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hmm. <laughs> the calling her was Steven Spielberg. He was working up there. Shut up. Oh, wow. Are you serious? That That's so cool. Yeah. I, and then I, there you go. I feel like we just stepped on like the craziest synchronicity of landmines of like, why wasn't it the skull this way? It's like, you've got your answer I've from the source. Like, that's with amazing. That. Remember we went to go see it in theaters oh. in 2007. I walked away so disappointed. If you would have told me this was going to happen. I'm probably the really? biggest Indiana Jones yeah. fan. You're a big fan Could of have been amazing. Wow. Okay. There's one more story. Wow. So when I do my lectures, I say... I say Indiana Jones, uh, uh, Crystal Skull is you know is with Indiana Jones. So I say that, but I also say I have a new thing now. I found a letter about a year and a half ago. It was written to Mitchell Hedges, and it was by the uh, head of British uh, Naval Intelligence. And it was a coded letter. Didn't make much sense. I didn't think much of it, but I gave a I sent a copy to a to a friend of mine, and he. Uh, did a little exploration and on the bottom. There's there's a the person that typed it in London uh, put his initials. They always have to do that. And uh, uh, the person that did it is uh, is Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming. Yeah, you ever hear of him? No, I don't think so. Actor. Ian. No, Ian Fleming is the. The one that wrote and was in the, he was in, the, he worked for British Secret Service in London and he was working with all the agents in the field. And then after that, he wrote a, wrote a series of books because of his knowledge and working with the agents. And so he was, his, uh, he wrote a book, his, his books is called uh, James Bond. Oh my God, that's right. Ian Fleming, James Bond, duh. Wow. Well, I mean, it yeah. just shows. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bond's been around for a while, though. <laughs> That's crazy. That's interesting. That crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so many connections. Uh, no, I say, yeah, when I go on a talk, I say, well, that uh, the Crystal Skull is connected with uh, Indiana Jones and James Bond, two of my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> Giants Wild. of pop culture. <laughs> well, I mean, not, like I said, there you go. The skull just pushes energy in different directions yeah. and, and made some of the best films and stories of all time come in contact with that it, thing. It, my mind's things blown happen. right now. Yeah. <laughs> my mind is so blown. We've heard so many crazy stories and just, I thought it was all going to be about the skull, but it's well, like the skull has this magnetism around it of like all these crazy events. Right. It's just hundred uh, percent. I love it. And, and Bill, we were chatting before and, uh, you had told us a story about a recent adventure that you were on and something that was found. Could you kind of tee that up again for us? And uh, it, sure. I don't know how much you can fill us in on, but as much as you can. Yeah, it's fine. Everything. Because what it was is uh, <laughs> I've been traveling a lot. Like I said, I, this year I was only been a home for a little over a month in the whole year because I go here and go there. Uh, this last, uh, round of trips, I started out uh, taking a train from uh, Chicago to, uh, I got off at, uh, right at the Mississippi River, and I went to a place called Nuvo, it's right on the Mississippi River, there's a lot of history there, but there's a lot of uh, indigenous artifacts, there's mounds there in the areas, 
they, you know, go back to pre pre history before the, you know before the indigenous even lived here. And so uh, I went there because there was a gathering of elders uh, there, and I was invited to. Uh, there was elders from uh, United States, Canada, Central and South America, and Australia. And so work, I got to work with them with a the skull. They wanted me to be there. So while I was there, uh, we we were taken across the Mississippi into I Iowa, and we were went along the Mississippi to this area, and it was it's an area that they use LADAR, and they were able to map out this underground structure. Hmm. So because of that and what I do with the skull, I wanted to bring it there, and so I did. But uh, the structure is the exact same size and shape as the Solomon's Temple. Jeez. Is that why? And it's buried deep underground right there. So I don't know how they they you know were drawn to it, but you know, people had said there was stuff in the area that was a, like legend. And, and that's definitely, that's pretty wild, yeah. And how did they know to scan that area of LIDAR just because they found a bunch of artifacts and different things that they thought, hey, this is a spot, let's go ahead and scan it, and that came up? Well, it was basically that there was uh, uh, legends about it to the the indigenous of the area, and and they they talked about that area. So it probably took, you know, a thousand years, two thousand years for the the soil to cover the whole thing, I would think, because yeah. it doesn't happen. But, uh, uh, you know, because it's right on the Mississippi and different, you know, big storms and different uh, ice flows and different things up north, it probably, a lot of it was pushed soil on top of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And do the indigenous people have any stories or any theories or any connections to, you know, who could have built well, you know, it? They, or? No, they talked about it. They, you know, they they told the people about it because they work with the indigenous, and they, and then they brought uh, two teams down there, and they're the ones that went to that area with lidar looking for it, and they were the ones that found this temple. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's it a uh, lot of amazing things. We you know that lidar is really changing the world. It really is. And, yeah. Now, academia is what I have the most problem with because they keep the world in a 5,000 thing and they have they don't want to change their history books and they want to keep it like that. And anything that's out of that thing, like things that shouldn't be, mm -hmm. they're definitely doing all they can to try to stop it. But because all these uh, very uh, qualified archaeologists are on these digs and are finding things 14, 15, 25,000 years old, they're finding them and they're showing up. Uh, it's uh, it's changing history and it has to change history because uh, to find out, you know, where and what and how, where we came from, that is going to be a way of freeing us to be all that we can be and take our full potential as uh, galactic uh family members, I think. Now, Bill, do you have anyone that's come in contact or meditated with the skull or has gotten any messages about what we are to expect on, you know, are we heading in the right direction? Is there any feelings that you have or you have hope about, you know, the direction of the planet as a whole? Well, you know, there's the, uh, the whole of the uh, extra dimensional world is very much aware of this little planet and what's happening. This has never happened in the history of any humanity that we had a point of chance to go into a, a higher consciousness. And so we're we're right teetering on the, the point of that. And but it's really because people are becoming more aware of who and what they are. And when they come into that understanding that they are the creator beings, they create everything. You know, if you look at anything we have, it came first by the mind thought, and then it was made into reality. And with the quantum technology that's coming through and all these different things, it's becoming more and more aware 
of the power of the heart and the mind together working. And mostly it has to do with blocks that we've carried with us from past lives, this life, whatever, that keep us held in a in a lower level of what we are. And so uh, what I say now, it's all about timeline. And there are, you can't save everyone because some people will choose that the different doors, there's three doors. So you can go in a door that helps mankind and it goes to a higher level. There's one that pretty much stays the same. And there's one that pretty much expands out of this whole dimensional world into a uh, whatever place that would be. So uh, it's not going to be up to us, but as the this energy is changing and the different uh, forces are coming in to the physical plane from the universe, the sun is beaming this energy of, of uh, higher consciousness. It's affecting people in so many ways. Some people have changed overnight into having a, a experience of that there's there they have this uh, knowledge of themselves and where they're going but it's just a matter of you have to realize if you're a creator being and if everything is beamed at you about negative stuff and you put your mind on it and think about it what do you think you're going to create right more chaos now if you if you have a chance <clears throat> to take Put it in the central point and then think about what you do want. What do you want for yourself, your family, your friends in the world? What do you see? And if you put your mind that way, you know, you can separate yourself and it's all in timelines. And you want a, a timeline for yourself that you're building a world that fits your reality, what you want. We're more powerful than we think. And, you know, if you stay in a fear point, you're going to fear is is very much there to take care of you. It's the ego. Mm -hmm. The ego, it gives you two things. It, get, it works on uh, pleasure and it works on pain. And if you look at that, you got that voice telling you, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. It'll hurt. You'll do all oh, this, that. Then you listen to that ego. It keeps you from becoming uh, any, you know, any higher level. So it's a matter of being aware and taking control of your heart and your mind because it's your your mind and your heart working together that creates this world that we live in where if you want uh you want something good in your life well you better think about good things if you want something bad think about bad things but what do you want do you would you rather have good things absolutely man uh, yeah I yeah. think people get too focused on all the, not just the distractions, but the negative things that are happening. It's like sometimes I, I can't watch the news. I, I don't want to be my heart even to get attached to the next big scandal oh. or whatever it is, some giant conspiracy or, you know, a school got shot up. And, and you know, you got to know about those things, but you can't it's sit now, there and focus on it. It's now known as doom scrolling. Oh. Yeah, it's and called that, that's, doom scrolling. Yeah, that's a tough I'm a victim thing. of it. I do it a lot, you know, because I, I, Focusing I know my on what you want. <laughs> we we think of the same things and look at them. But I like what you said too of you know, the whole what do you want and how do you want to get there in the fear part, right? So I recently quit my job and when I did do that, I was having a lot of anxiety and a friend of mine said, because I was like, I'm so anxious, I'm I feel sick to my stomach, and they were like, Were you anxious or are you excited? Are we, are we confusing right. these messages when we go, oh, I'm fearful? Are you fearful or are you excited? Because they're right. the same thing, actually. The flight or fight is the same response in your body. Right. And what you do with that and how you ride out that fear or, and you know, excitement. Yeah. How do you want to take it? Which way do you want to turn it? Yeah. So it's pretty much the belief that the, the many of the people that are living here have come as souls from a period of Volanus. And it's there's a chance that we can go into a higher consciousness or we can do what they did and sink the continent. So, but it has to do with you need the negative as much as you need the positive. If everything was hunky-dory, there was no problems, we'd all stay home watching TV and, right. and 
drinking beer and eating pe- uh, popcorn, you know. Yep. But with this, all the things that are happening, it's squeezing us to become more than we are fit, more than we believe we can be, and go into with into ourselves in prayer. The skull says the world can be saved by prayer. And prayer is the way of focusing your mind on a positive reality and opening up to that. So it's quite uh, interesting, but it's quite joyful. But without the negative, putting all the stuff on the TV and doing all this stuff to try to distract and put you in fear, then there's no chance for you to get out of the stands that we're here watching the game and saying, Oh, you should have done that. Oh, you should have done that. And getting in the field and start playing the game of life and and creating, make some good things in your life because uh, they we have to have the balance. We're in a, a negative and positive world, so it can't. It's not going to be all good and all bad. It's going to be the balance, and that's what we have to use in, in our minds is realize our power with our creation and. We're helping ourselves, but we're helping all mankind because we're all really a part of everyone and everything. And the things that yeah. you don't like in someone else, it's really some part of a self that we don't like and we're we're putting it on them because that's how, how that works. So it's, it's yeah. a really interesting time because people are starting to open their eyes and start to think a little bit. And that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, those are the messages I've been kind of getting the last seven years or so uh, pretty strongly through different avenues and meeting different people and having experiences of myself. And I mean, what you're saying resonates so much with me. Um, this is just, uh, and, the, and you can fall off track. You can, but you got to bring yourself back to oh, a point yeah. where you wake yourself up again every now and then and, and realize, like, all right, stay on the path. This is, you know, you've had all these messages, but your ego, like you said, is telling you, dude, you can't do this. There's no way you can create this. That's too much work or you don't have the right, you know, skill set to do it. Or, you know, we know people in podcasting. It's like so many of these guys were doing other things. And do they have technical skills with audio and video and all? No, they don't let it stop them. They're just focused on creating something positive and focusing on things that you're interested in is a great start. Of like, a what one. do you like? Start there yeah. and then start to figure out how you can help people through that or, um, you know, and, and get out of a job that you hate or whatever it is. And, you know, uh, it's, I think everybody has their own special abilities and we're just not, our culture doesn't yeah. provide a nurturing space for people to really figure out who they are. Number one, we don't teach that. Um, School teaches you how to be a useful cog in the wheel, how to get a job in a factory or go work for corporate America, but they don't teach you how to go for your dreams and your passions, which is what you got to teach. You know, for me, I try to uh, teach my kids if it's like, Hey, there's this other picture out here. Yes. Very good. Yes. So yeah, it's uh the skull is saying that you know it's to remember who and what we are, and by connecting to that, we find these gifts and ability. Those gifts and ability are our gifts that have been given us by the Creator, to, and a lot of people have been made fun of as a child that they could see things that other people couldn't see, or they could they had a they could uh, pick up things and see the future or whatever. And when they were made fun of, they put it away and stick it in a box and they never use it. Now as adults, it's still in the box. And these are your gifts from to use. And, and you, when you use those gifts, you can find a thing that you're fi- really good at. You can become that fully. And by doing that, uh, you find real joy. The real joy is being able to help someone else as they get the, the feeling of, of, of love and, and guidance back as, if you follow that thing, you're always in prosperity. You're always in peace. You're always in joy. So that's that's the real secret is taking the chance and having an adventure. But Skull says it's time for joy. It's time for peace. It's time for that love to share with all of us. So that's, that's what we do. Sometimes it just feels like we're really far apart from that, though, Bill. 
in our culture, especially here in the United States, people get so left, right, and drawing lines in the sand with each other, and you can't even have a conversation without angering po- political or saying something wrong. Or it's just like it feels like everybody's walking on eggshells yeah. with each other all the time, and it just seems, you know, like. The message is peace, but wow, are we far away from that in some cases. But, you know, you get out there and you meet people in, in every day, and it's it's really the media that's showing us that we're that divided. I don't think we really are that divided, to be honest. And I think for the most part, you meet people all over the place. We travel quite a bit, and there's so many great, nice people. And, you know, oh, I'm sure yeah. you've seen that in your travels that we have so much more in common than than we know. That is so true. That is so true. And that's pretty much. Yeah, it's uh, there. You know, it's a it's a metal thing. They're trying to separate people. If you're this, you're that, you're that. But yeah. we're really all. One. And when you come you into know. that. But the thing is, is you can't uh, let other things that are negative affect you in yourself because you want to always keep yourself balanced and then think about the what's the joy and the happiness and just put your mind on that so strongly that the other forces can't have any effect on you and and just let that energy because you know i find too that there's a lot of and we all have these guides and angels and different forces, ET forces, galactic, whatever, that are working with us. And they're watching us and helping us. And so many times we don't ever ask for help. So you walk down the street and the little voice says, uh, don't go that way, uh, go this way. And you say, ah, that's, that's ridiculous. And you go that way and now there's all this big block and everything. You're stopped and and you're stuck there and there's all kinds of problems. And you keep doing that every day until you finally think, well, you know what? I might as well listen to that little voice because they can't uh, they can't do it for you because it's their spiritual law that, that you have to ask for their help. And so if you ask for your, their help, you'll get the help. And it's really, it's, it's the, serendip- the serendipity that you'll have in your life where things will come to you and things will work. It's so beautiful. And that's kind of what, you know, if you can get in that state of mind, hey, it, it really is very uplifting for sure. And it's fun. And that's what the skull says. Time for fun. God, yeah, man. <laughs> I love that. I'm, I mean, we're always ready to have a good time. You know, Bub and I have always yeah. been kind of known as a, a bit ornery, you know, back in the day. We were always at parties, you know, tr- trying to make people laugh and and really just trying to, you know, keep yeah. the keep the mood light. Um, so, you know, I try to continue on with that. And, and these are things that I need to be hearing right now, Bill. So you're like totally speaking to me. Uh, it's just something's channeling through that skull. I don't know what it is, but uh, I mean, I'm like vibrating right now with these messages because I don't, I think this in, and you know, you got people out there that's, that's like, oh, you know, all this interdimensional energy, it's this woo woo, but we're, we're finding out with technology that this stuff is not that far fetched. You know, we're talking about quantum Uh, computers and mycelium networks and these strange things that we're all learning. Um, that, that, you know, this, this idea of, um, you know, the skull potentially having that ability to reach people's higher potential is, is fascinating to me. And, and it resonates and I don't care what people say. <laughs> yeah. You get all kind of, all kind of people, all kind of things, but it's not for everyone. And that's what I've learned, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you have, but I do have found that if I work, I could work with a thousand people and every one would be different in, you know, what, what's, what is, what it does for them because there's not like one thing, one thing fits all. It's very, very individual. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so exciting because people come to me and, you know, want to uh, work with the skull. And it's like, well, this week I had a, a lady that uh, lived in, uh, I think it was Bermuda, and she's got uh, two doctor degrees from Yale, and so she's quite knowledgeable. But uh, 
she she was connecting in a whole different way with the skull that was fitting for her and helping her in whatever way it was. And then there was a, another person that was very mental and very much into the physical world and business and stuff mm. like that. And but there also was being called to get, take the time to spend time with themselves and come into more of a uh, a spiritual reckoning. So that was being part pulled to them too. And so that was neat that we could work with that. And then another gentleman right out that came this week, and he was a uh, he was probably really advanced. Uh, spiritual it's like his uh, level of of love universal love that went through him it was very very high and so he uh you know connecting with him and connecting with him through atlantis was really interesting so everyone is so different and uh it it's uh it's a pretty good job i have because i get to <laughs> work with people change lives and it's like wow that that is i like it but each one of us, like, you're following your gifts. And in doing that, you you have a gift I can't do. And so, but you're making it so you're helping people and you're bringing different people to you, telling their stories that touch them in a different way to make a difference in the world. And so you, you're really, you know, it's, it's a blessing and a gift, but you had to listen to that voice inside and you had to take a chance to say I'm going to I'm going to try and I'm going to do it and then by following that things fall into place so neatly it's pretty cool yeah yeah and there are always bumps in the road but you, yeah like like you said you just uh, kind of keep following your heart and uh, I appreciate you saying that I really I really do Bill because that's one of the reason uh, you know this show isn't about us it's about getting people's stories out there and you know, so many of these researchers here in Ohio was, you know, Jeffrey Wilson and Ross Hamilton and all the folks that you've met. You know, one of our big goals is to get some of this knowledge out there that's so hidden from us. And, uh, you know, having people like yourself on and get behind the scenes look from all these different angles. So I, I really appreciate I really appreciate that that feedback, man. Um, but, you know, what what you're doing is the joy you're feeling the fun for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's part of it sometimes we have to sit back and the show's a lot of work and we all have lives and families and and sometimes uh you know it can, it can get overwhelming at times but we always have to look at we started this to have a good time number one this is supposed to be fun we got to keep that in perspective so this right here you're messaging that back we needed to hear that bill so thank you <laughs> Well, thank you for having me here, and hey, I, we've we've had these good times before, and, and hey, hopefully we'll have some more in the future. So that sounds good. Absolutely. Hey, I gotta tell you afterwards about a good friend of mine that we've met and worked with, this young lady, and for four years she couldn't get out of bed. She went blind twice. Uh, she had every you know problem you can imagine, and she started reading up all these healing books and all these different positive things and with by the end of four years she got out of bed and she took a trip and went to uh uh to egypt and went through egypt and then from egypt she went to and this is you know just getting out of, out of bed after all that time she's healed herself that way and so she's really amazing wow. but she is so positive and her you know, you can just feel her heart and her love and her deepness of what she is. And so uh, you, I think you'll really like to meet her too. She's really, oh, wow. really a cool person. I would love to. Thank you for that. I mean, like I said, one great thing about this too is this, the amount of people that we get to talk to has grown exponentially. And there are times like, you know, I'm not expecting to talk to a person and they send us someone's way and it just ends up being another mind-blowing conversation and and it just keeps perpetuating so i appreciate yeah. that man <laughs> all your love and it, it'll always you know it'll take you in some amazing places for sure yeah 
Well, I'm, I'd love to go on an adventure with you, Bill. Uh, you know, we could bring some gear, some photo equipment, or anything you need. Oh, yeah. we, we've got all kinds of toys. <laughs> yeah, just think of how uh, that would be, because uh, there's still uh, stuff buried. They've only explored 10% of this cave. The only way you can get to the area, you have to get OKs from the indigenous that own the area, or you can't get in. And so with, with the, uh, the okay to do it, we're able to get there and we have the right to film if we want. So wouldn't that be neat to be lowered down and see this, you know, beautiful cave you're going into? Absolutely. It's just, I, I would I get lowered say, down. I'm a former rock Bubs climbing a climber. junkie as well. So yeah, yeah like I might I need a, a little training before that, but yeah, I, I mean, I've, uh, I've, I've been on a, a rope before, but not from like, down into a cave. We'll get experts, but we could handle getting down it. <laughs> yeah, you got a whole crew. Uh, did we talk about that before the show? I can't remember. Was it? I think. Did we talk about it before the show? Before the show, we okay. haven't. Yeah, I don't remember. And that. What was the story behind the cave? One more time, Bill, if you can talk about it. Yeah, it's uh, uh, what it is is going to Ecuador, and uh, you're going by a small boat up the Amazon to a, uh, uh, a docking spot, you get out and you walk two hours through the jungle to this little village and uh, you spend the night in the village and then you go another hour out to the cave area. It's one area you have to take, uh, you have to take um, mules and you ride the mules up the hill because it's just like stones and up the hill with all your stuff as opposed to carrying up. You can carry it up if you want, but I think it'd be fun to take the mules up myself. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'll take a mule ride, of course. <laughs> yeah, and then when you get, I'm in. It's, uh, there's a there's a lot of openings in this cave, but the place this is one of the main ones. And Armstrong, the astronaut, in 1975, went there looking for the gold tablets, and these are tablets that they believe you know were left there by possibly. Uh, people from Atlantis, you know, they're ancient tablets. And uh, they, uh, they, they're they then able to, so they went down in the cave with an expedition, a full expedition, and they came out with some stuff, but it was all covered up. Nobody knows what it was, but uh, there's still so much stuff. It's, it's a connection, they say, between ancient technology and ET technology. So, uh, would it be an adventure? That should be a good one. Yes. In, <laughs> down. Yes. However you want to say yep. it. <laughs> I'll stow away. Yeah. Bill, you might set yeah. up the trip and be like, well, we should have invited those guys. I'll be like, who? And and you said, <laughs> was, was Josh Gates a part of that one too? Or did you guys have another I, trip that you did before? No, I just, I did the one going to look in the caves of Honduras. That's right. Okay. Uh, that was, that was interesting because. We went in this cave. You had to rappel into it, and you got in there, and then when you turned the lights on, the whole wall was crystal. That was really wild. Whoa. And they had these tunnels, and I was following the tunnel. I'll send you a picture. Matter of fact, let's see if I can have a couple pictures here. Uh, yeah. When I And so you're going down this tunnel, and as you're walking there, you look to the side, and there was these three monkey gods, and they're looking at you in the dark, in the middle of nowhere. And there's, you know, that they have a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff down there that the Mayas put on things for protection. And we're walking in this area, looking at those monkey gods, and I thought, do I really want to go past that? And <laughs> I, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'll show you. Would you walk past that? Can you see it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Wow, that's strange. Wow. I'm just just coming across that weird cave. What would you do? <laughs> Bill, you just you just tell us when. I don't know. If I would, okay. You tell us when. I don't know if I'd walk by it. But yeah, it's I don't either back, go forward, and it was so nifty. You know, I believe those caves there, that's the ones that probably tie into all the caves, even all the way uh -huh. under the sea. And so yeah. to be able to go, you go down and then there's a trail off this way and you go down another here. And it was just, wow, it was so amazing. So that, that would be a, 
I definitely want to go back to for sure. Incredible. Incredible. Now, a while back, Bill, you had uh, talked to me about the megalith, in, uh, the Montana megaliths. Have you been oh, yeah. back there recently? Um, again, uh, do you still feel like those are actually ancient megaliths in Montana? Uh, those are so amazing places that, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's, they, they, they believe they're like 50,000 years old. And these, these megaliths, you know, they think how, you know, they're, how, they're man, they're not man-made. They're just natural. Right. This one place, it's, if you hit it, it's like a drum. You hear the drum, but it's got, uh, let's see that, uh, polymer, uh, cement all over the outside in these areas and you can see where some of it was painted at mm. one time mm. and there was a special area that connected it was a door into the underworld and a door to uh, uh very you know into this because uh, underneath it there's supposedly a whole city so when putting the skull there uh yeah <laughs> i put the skull there and went back and was taking a picture and the, the skull was in the picture, started to disappear. And it was like freaking me out. But uh, <laughs> what was, it was, I got it back and it was, it was okay. But uh, that was really kind of different. But it was downloading all that knowledge from below. And that was, so it was pretty neat. But that, uh, those megaliths, there's a, there's at this one place, there's looks like a 12 foot tall uh, robot that's made out of stone. There's also a ancient Buddha sitting on top of the rock there, and it's it's really big too. And then there's a pan control panel that was there that you could put your fingers in all these holes. And what? Uh, wow. Okay, and this Bill just recently they had they were left in the middle of nowhere, and nobody knew they were there. They were just found in the last probably since. Uh, 2011 12 13 yeah before that it's just uh the deer and the bear and the only things were out there is right you know it's in the middle of uh the forest there too but the megaliths are really neat so i i plan to go back there uh in the fall and hopefully it's not too cold <laughs> in the fall yeah. I'm there but i'm really drawn to go back there again too yes yeah, they're and really neat private property where it's private property correct uh, owned by the uh what do they call it the uh is uh it's it's a government property bureau of land have, management yeah that's it it's under that but there's it's oh it's not just one or two air it's over an area of probably hmm. 50 miles oh wow the, yeah. and this one place there's a uh, these two columns that go straight up, and they go up about 50 feet. These two small columns, and they balance a rock on top of it. Dolman. And it's in a little, yeah, dolmen, and it's in a little bit of a a area where if a earth, an earthquake hits it, it will go like this and and settle straight back up. What? Yeah. 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 Those dolmens are earthquake proof. Like Tinker Toy for Giants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that pretty wild? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Has that ever been fully documented by anybody? Has has anybody? I, I haven't oh, seen any recent photos, but from the pictures, it's really hard to tell. Just because, you, like you yeah. said, there's so much forest and overgrowth, and All right, I'll send you a couple pictures along with the pictures I send you if you like. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. <laughs> wow. Bill. Yeah. I I feel a real connection to that area, and it's a very special place for sure. Wow. There's a there's this about twenty foot tall uh, stone uh, looks like an ancient bird, and there's some of those in uh, in e in Egypt and stuff. The same bird, and uh, it's you know it's right on the side of one of the these big rocks, hmm. and it's only about this thick. And it's you know twenty feet tall, all rock. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sure that the the wind made it right. <laughs> yeah. How do you explain it's, that one? Jeez. So it's it's uh there's a lot of things that are coming out in the world, mm -hmm. and it's so um, what there is, and you know you have to go with an open mind, 
and look at it because there definitely is more we're finding now than ever before with the technology we have. Yeah, I think it goes to your point earlier, too, about saying, you know, nobody wants to rewrite the history books. We just right? want to yeah, add to it. We want it to be more clear. Well, but they might have to rewrite some stuff, too. And that if that's a problem, they need to get over it because yeah. we need to know what's really going on it's so we can get somewhere. And, and like you said, possibly be that first iteration to be able to attain the next level, get to the mm -hmm. next step, right? Yeah, reach our yeah. full potential. Yeah. Not just a civilization, but Because it feels very edge knife balance right now yeah we're teetering on we could go to this timeline or we could go to the timeline that bill's talking about right. where you know everybody's evolving consciously and we're living in a i don't even like to use the word utopia because that just that, that just it seems it, non-attainable it brings on a very but at least in a state of not non-war and oh my we gosh, can actually that'd be great. you know this and this ufo technology these exotic materials that we've been covering free and energy we talked about with bill is as that, because if it is actually going to be disclosed and these exotic materials can develop into these different energy systems and we don't have to worry about petroleum, maybe we can have time and freedom to start discover, discovering who we really are. That's the hope is that the technology is supposed to, I don't even want to say make our lives easier, but make our lives where we don't have to be in that rat race you know, trying to get ahead all the time and, and to beat each other down to, to climb that ladder of yeah. of success. But it's all in our hearts and our minds. So if that's what you want, let's create it. So because that's like that. kind of what I've been doing is, you know, since I'm I'm not getting older, but I guess I am getting older. But to be able to, uh, you know, with the skull, I'd like to have it for press prosperity or whatever that word is uh prosper yeah what Posterity. it is so i want yeah i want to get a uh, a place where i can have it safely at where people can come from all over to see it mm. and I, and i like it to be you know like a, a temple for the skull where it's uh you know the crystals and stuff around and being able to meditate at a very area of very good energy point on the earth you know we're and i'd like to have like hills and trees and a little creek going through where you can have trails through the woods for meditation and as i do that wow. i want to bring in some of these top healers i know because i know i'm meeting some really special special people and have centers of different types of healing and meditation and and uh you know mental balance and and growing healthy food for and that's what I like to put together with a place for the skull. And so that's kind of putting out there that the that it, the right things will come into place for that to happen now. And I I think that uh, it's going to happen. So Ooh, it's, I feel it's time. That. I well, feel that right me, here, Bill. Made me think of my wife and how she's like getting into yoga and like a different mm -hmm. type of medicine now. She like she's a nurse, but she wants to get into more of nutrition-based health, you know, functional health, like preventative health, like wants to go and right. be able to offer these services like at different offices when she gets done all this to say, hey, I know every patient doesn't want to do it, but are there patients that want to know these things that they can do to really kind of elevate their health? Because just working in that industry for so long, you don't see it happen. It's like, follow these certain guidelines and then go right but there's no like you can do this this and this or you know maybe there's not the inclination towards it but what you're saying with that i'm imagining like a crystal skull sanctuary oh, for like meditation yeah. or like beautiful I'm it's already, a giant park as he was explaining and i was just like envisioning this yeah you took me on a wall incredible <laughs> temple with the stream and yeah. butterflies yeah. everywhere and you can see the stars <laughs> sitting on these benches by the water and just be able to meditate and and connect with the land at a very special place. Yeah. But you know, with the healing, you know, there's they're coming out with these uh, med beds and higher technology for that. You know that we, as uh, you know, they're finding that the mind has so much power in healing. Mm -hmm. And you know, as, far as you know, giving people poison to uh, get rid of one problem that cause four more. Yep. Uh, exactly. People are up and wanting to find a more natural way of restoring the body to health. It's more 
preventive medicine instead of medicine that's, oh, you got a problem, uh, take this and it'll get rid of it. But now you have another problem, we'll get rid of that too, you know. But yep. if you have the, and it's more uh, mind, body, spirit in balance. So it's, you know, we're more than just physical bodies. You have to be able, and when I work with the skull, it seems like it works on the mental, physical, spiritual, and psychic body. And a lot of times people have a problem and maybe a psychic problem on their body that's causing a physical problem. So if you just remove the physical problem, the psychic problem is still there. Uh, we have uh, uh, someone that it's that we've been working with, and here's kind of interesting. They uh, there was five girls that became friends, and after being friends for a while, uh, two of them removed themselves from the planet uh, by by choice, you know, and then. <clears throat> Another one got a disease that could end her life too. And so what it is, they, with going back in the past lives, they found that they were, in a, we were in a village in southern France, and they were, uh, when the different uh, forces outside, the, some of the kings and the different uh, groups of people were coming to Bump, bump, you know, destroy all of them because they weren't in the faith that they wanted them to be in mm. and they wanted to get rid of it. So these young girls at the time made a promise that if you go, I'll go too. And so they that's in their subconscious, sub subconscious deep inside. So it's not on a physical level. It's more not even on a mental level, but it's on a psychic level that they have this happen to them. And so when you can go back and see the problem and explain the problem and when they can be able to understand why there is a problem and realize that they don't need to be bound by that at all anymore because it's an old promise that doesn't mean anything and they forgive themselves and forgive the other ones and release it, then they're able to make a change and 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 instead of wanting to do, do harm to themselves physically or whatever, they're able to come back and, and come back in life. So it's all in the mind. Right. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Wow, Bill. My heart is it's, full. There's more fun all the time. Yeah. I, <laughs> Dude, I love talking to Bill. This has been yeah. so much fun. I yes. mean, and time just flies by. I mean, we're we're at that point yeah. where, like I said, my heart is full. My cup is full. This has been an unbelievable conversation with Bill Homan. And, Bill, if you want to just let us know where we can find you, anything interesting more that you have coming up that you want to talk about, and then just leave our audience with uh, – And you've said so many beautiful words tonight, but uh, leave us with some last words, and uh, we'll start wrapping this baby up. Okay, well, it was really, it was a lot of fun, and it did go really quick, didn't it? And I, yeah. I, I guess, it was that, but hopefully, I was adding some interesting stuff. So that's that's what it's all about, sharing. But uh, yeah, I have the we have a new web page, and it's uh, MitchellHedges.com. It's Mitchell uh, Dash Hedges or just MitchellHedges.com, and uh, it's it's uh, uh, it kind of explains some of the stuff we are doing. And uh, it's it that's something you can check into, and you can also contact us through that web web page. So that's a good thing. And uh, you know, I uh, I've had something you know, because I've been going so much when I got back. Because, like I said, I went out from uh, from out and uh, and on the Mississippi. I went to uh, Scottsdale. And work with the skull with a lot of people. They had a big party for me, and they had uh, the lead center singer, not singer, but the guitarist for uh, Stephen Nix was there hmm. playing on the side. And it was, and that guy is really good. His music touches your heart, mm -hmm. and so that was really. <laughs> then we went to drove to uh, Joshua Tree and went to uh, Contact in the Dead, and met a lot of interesting people there. I bet uh, Jason. Met him, and I've been wanting to meet him for a long time. He's 
he's uh, kind of a, a someone I really look up to because of his books that his knowledge that he's wrote and Who given was it? to mankind. Uh, J.J. Hertek. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, we went from there. I got back to Indiana. I was there two days. I flew down to uh, Florida to take care of family stuff. I flew back after four days. I was there two days, and then I got in the car and drove to Lilydale to do the thing with the monks. Uh, and I was there a week working with people and come back. And so by the time I got back, I was there one day, and then I helped my son put together a float for the uh, parade. And the next day, I was walking in the parade. I was had a day off, and then I walked in another parade. And that's how it's been going. You know? Wow. So I'm Man. supposed to go to Mount Shasta for the Lions Gate and be there at Lions Gate. But that's a really hard trip because it's three and four days in a, in a train because I usually take the train when I travel with the skull. And when I get there, then I spend uh, almost a week there and then get back in the train and go back. And so yeah. you work nonstop. And so I, I'm trying to maybe work a way not to have to do that one. And so it just uh, – just things like that. And we have a, in Fort Wayne, we have a thing where we're, they're doing a, a party to help the skull and possibly raise money to get the, uh, the center going. So that would really be neat and very blessed to be able to have their help in doing that. So there's just, uh, it, you know, if you let it, you know, you just start thinking and then all this stuff starts happening. And uh, it's been a real pleasure to catch up with you guys and, uh, and we're we're doing our thing and having fun. So heck yeah, man, heck yeah. And Bill, let us know too. Send us some links and uh, the fundraiser for the the yes. temple and and the event. Let we can help. help promote it. We get the word out. Um, you know, yeah. please do. Um, let us know how we can help. Yeah, I'm going to in November. I'm going to go out to a uh, star meeting and on the. Uh, uh, on the Lakota uh, uh, reservation for uh, Chief Golden Eagle's daughter, and so I'm really I I have great care for him, and I have great feelings of love for her because she's a very special person. Nikki, so I'm glad. To, yeah, Nikki, I want to help her. Yeah, so yeah, Nikki's awesome. So I'll be her. But on the way, I'm going to stop at uh, and do the Montana megaliths because I, you know, like oh. I said, I'm so. Want to take some video? Follow us along. It'd be fun. November. All right. We're going to keep in contact about that. Yep. A hundred percent. I will absolutely follow up on that. Uh, Bill, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we're going to wrap this baby up. Any final words for our audience? Any message from the skull or from your heart? Uh, lay it on us, brother. Okay. Well, the thing is saying, you know, that says there's, uh, there's, uh, you need to connect with your inner self at a really deep level and bring that through because that that is who and what you are and when you do that then you can get in balance with your true happiness so that's neat the skull is pushing peace joy and love and that's what it wants to send out to all of us now so uh much love and uh that's what i pretty much uh want to share with everyone Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Well, Bill. Bill, thank you again. Stay right there. We're going to come back and and say goodbye to you, give you a proper goodbye. Uh, but we're going to wrap this baby up once again. Bill Homan, everybody. Thank you, Bill. See you, Bill. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Buff shocked. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was fantastic. Great stories. That was amazing like the Olympics message of strange. Yeah, it was. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, it was. I still don't a like. I haven't digested ninety nine percent of what we just talked about. That was fantastic. Wow, what a, what a great conversation. Wow. Um, what a yeah. great guy. Yeah, Bill's the best. I'm telling you, um, I, we like I said, we met him. We connected right Absolutely, away. Absolutely, but I, I, I didn't get to have that yeah, much interaction. Yeah, you, you were before, running the camera. And I know you have on a, on a deeper level. So it was a lot of fun for me to be able yeah, to I'm get glad. to ask some questions I'm and glad. just really get to. Uh, meet him and yeah, let his character I'm come glad. through because he's a character. I was man. actually 
<laughs> more excited for you to get, be able to get to connect yeah. with Bill. I had a blast. So, the, my amazing. head hurt so bad because I laughed so hard. And my <laughs> mind got blown so many times. Like I have a um, full blown like small headache from just like. Yep, I, the input. Of course, you're at the Crystal Skulls, and like you're at the party. Lindsey Buckingham, the guy from Fleetwood Mac that's playing yeah. guitar. Like, yes, you're right. He is stunning on the guitar. That guy is makes me feel bad for playing the guitar. He's so good. <laughs> um, and, it's just he's lived an amazing life. Yeah, and, and he's still going at it. We'll just, dig up some photos too, guys. Uh, around the time that this releases, we'll have uh, we have have some great photos that we took with Bill oh, yeah. uh, on that trip, and uh, we can loop in all their socials. But uh, we have some pretty excellent kind of uh, from the Serpent Mount Star Knowledge event that we did. Yeah, so we'll definitely release some of those things. And That'd uh, be cool. Yeah, this has been great. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. You're the best. You can follow us at the Strange Road at Instagram. TikTok. Loner and, Stoner. Yes. And thank you to Loner job. Stoner and Master Control holding it down with all the audio and video tonight. Yep. Uh, and uh, like, subscribe, share, follow. We appreciate all your guys' support. Peace, love, and chicken grease. We are signing out. <laughs> Later. Peace. <laughs>